In this video, we review using managed identities with Azure Automation. I have to be honest, I haven't thought much about Azure Automation for a while. It's a great product that I've covered in several videos, but there hasn't been a lot of buzz around the product for a while. Microsoft seemed to have put the focus on Azure Functions. I even used Azure Functions for my recent version of the Windows Virtual Desktop Start-Stop script. One feature that stood out with Azure Functions was the use of managed identities. That gave the application privileges to manage other Azure resources. It was much simpler to set up and manage compared to the run as account in Azure Automation. So I was excited to see that managed identities with Azure Automation is now in public preview. I'm going to walk through using a managed identity in Azure Automation with a script that will shut down my lab VMs at the end of each day. Before that, please take a second to like, subscribe, share, and click the bell icon for notification of new content. If you'd like to learn more about Windows Virtual Desktop, check out my course, Zero to Hero with Windows Virtual Desktop on udemy.com. Let's start with what a managed identity is and why to use it. A managed identity provides an identity for applications to use when connecting to and managing resources that support Azure AD authentication. A managed identity gets privileges in Azure AD with RBAC roles. There are two types of managed identities, a system assigned managed identity that's created and managed with the application. When the application is removed, the managed identity is removed also. And there's user assigned managed identity. A user assigned managed identity is created by the user and assigned to applications. This works well for many to one scenarios. For example, if you have multiple apps that need access to one resource, with a user assigned managed identity, you can create and manage identities with the required privileges and then assign it to multiple applications. User assigned managed identities are not currently supported in Azure Automation. Hopefully we'll see support by the time that goes GA. Until now, Azure Automation used run as accounts to access Azure resources. A run as account is an Azure AD application that's configured with contributor rights to the subscription by default. A self-signed certificate and service principal are used to manage authentication. The certificate is only good for one year and has to be renewed before it expires. I think we can all agree that avoiding expiring certificates is a good thing. Coming up next, I have a script that will find all servers in the subscription that have a specific tag and shut them down. I'm going to run this at 10 p.m. every day with Azure Automation and a managed identity to make sure the lab is shut down. There's a lot of options available for automating starting and stopping Azure VMs. The goal here is using managed identities to access the Azure subscription. We'll walk through setting up the Azure Automation account, creating the managed identity, assigning it permissions, and then create the runbook. Let's get started in the Azure portal. Here we are in the Azure portal. Let's start by creating a new automation account called CIR Auto Shutdown. And of course, you can name yours, whatever you'd like. We'll go to Automation Accounts, create a new automation account. I'll give it the name. Make sure you're in the correct subscription. Create a new resource group. Select your location. Central US for this example. Disable the run as account. We won't need this if we're using the managed identity. And click create. Looks like that finished. I'll do a refresh. And there's the new automation account. Let's go into the new automation account. We need to import a couple modules. Azure Automation installs the older Azure RM PowerShell modules by default. The script uses the newer AZ modules, so let's import them next. Go to Modules under Shared Resources. Browse the gallery and search for AZ Accounts. This is a prerequisite for all other AZ modules and has to be added first. I'll select the account, go to import and OK. We'll 
We'll go back to the automation account and you can see the AZ accounts module is importing. We need to wait for this to show as available before moving on. This is going to take a couple minutes. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. The AZ accounts module now shows available. Next, we'll do the same to import the AZ compute module. The runbook needs the compute module to manage the VMs. We'll go to browse gallery, search for AZ compute. and import, and be sure to click OK. Let's go back to the automation account. And if we refresh, the AZ compute module shows status of importing. This will take a couple minutes to finish also. Let's move on to enabling the managed identity next. Under account settings, look for identity. Under System Assigned Identities, change it to On and click Save. And yes. The user assigned identities are shown but are not officially supported yet. We now have an object ID for the identity and the option to add role assignments. Next, let's give the identity access with an RBAC role. Select Azure Role Assignments. and add a role assignment. We'll set the scope to a subscription, but notice the different options available. Under role, give it virtual machine contributor. This will give it permission to read attributes and shut down VMs. Click save. Once done, let's go over to the subscription and see what that looks like. We'll go to Access Control, Role Assignments, and at the bottom, we can see the role assignment. The managed identity has the same name as the automation account. A couple tests are showing as well. These are from tests I ran before recording the video. I'm pointing this out because I deleted those automation accounts, and the managed identity should have been deleted with it. I'm going to give it a few hours. It may need to scavenge those out. It is possible this may be a side effect of being in public preview and not GA yet. Let's go back to automation accounts and select the new automation account. We'll create a new PowerShell runbook. Go to runbooks, create a runbook, give it a name, auto stop for this example. and select PowerShell for the runbook type, and click Create. Next, copy and paste the code into the runbook. This code will be available at the link below. The code starts by importing the accounts and compute AZ module. After that, I have a block of code commented out. This is to illustrate what was needed to create a connection with the run as account. After that is what's needed for the managed identity, a simple connect AZ account statement. And after that, we have the tags and tag values that are used to select the VMs to shut down. Next, we have the stop VM function. This just runs a stop AZ VM command, forcing the deallocation and using no wait to speed up the process. That's all in a try catch block for error handling. After that is the command to get the VMs with a tag and tag value specified in the tags variable. And last, there's a write output command that shows the VMs it's stopping and then passes the VMs to the stop VM function. If I was to spend more time on this, I may add code to only run this against VMs that are not already deallocated, but it doesn't hurt to shut down a deallocated VM. Let's test the code. And keep in mind, if this works, the VMs with that tag will be shut down. So be mindful if you're running this in a production environment or any other environment where somebody may be working on these VMs. Click Save. And then go to Test Pane. And click Start. And this will take a minute or two to finish.
There it is. It looks like it completed successfully. Let's go back to the VMs. They should be deallocating right now. There we are. We have one that stopped. The first five are running. There is a little delay between running the shutdown command and seeing that updated in the portal. If it seems like nothing's happening, just give it a minute. We'll run a refresh. Now we can see some are starting to deallocate. Okay, and the rest of them are stopped. Great, that worked. Let's go back to the runbook. We'll go back to the automation account, runbooks. Select our auto stop runbook. Go to edit. Now that we know it works, we're going to publish the runbook. Now that we've published the runbook, we can use it for a reoccurring automation. To do that, let's set up the schedule next. So go back to the automation account. From the automation account, go to schedules under shared resources. Add a schedule. And I'll call this one 10 p.m. daily. Ten PM is past my bedtime, so I should be safe to shut down the lab at that point. Set the time. I'll set it to ten PM. And again, you can use whatever time you want. Make sure your time zone is set and go to reoccurring. I want this to run once every day. So I'll change it from hour to day. You can set an expiration if you'd like. I'm going to leave it as never expires and click create. Now that we have a shared schedule set up, let's go back to our runbook. Select our runbook. Go to schedules. Add a schedule. And we'll link the schedule we just created. And click OK. Now every day at 10 p.m., my lab computers in that subscription will shut down. Before I go, a quick note about the managed identities from the deleted automation account still showing up in the subscription. I found an article with instructions to disable managed identities before deleting the automation account. Unfortunately, that didn't seem to remove the identity. I passed the information along to Microsoft. Hopefully this will be addressed while it's in preview. Please like, subscribe, and share, and thanks for watching.